Hey everybody, welcome to another video by Break Into Tech Sales. We make videos all about how to get a job in tech sales. And today we're going to be talking about how much money you can make in tech sales. Specifically, we're going to be looking at data from one of the top tech sales recruiting firms for um, base salary and OTE for sales development representatives, account executives, and we'll also break the data down by city. So let's jump into it. The First thing we're looking at here is actually the break into tech sales website. So we have several blog posts on this topic of how much money you can make in tech sales. We break it down all sorts of different ways by job title, by location. So go check out this post on the website, this post that's specifically for sales development representatives, this post that's specifically for account executives. But for this video, we're not going to be on the break into tech sales website. We're actually going to look at a report from this recruiting firm um, called Betts Recruiting. This is probably my favorite recruiting firm. They specialize in tech sales. They've been around for a while. They do really great work, obviously, in the recruiting itself, but they also put out exceptional content that I've been following for three or four years now, specifically their compensation guide, which is what we're going to be walking through today. And the reason why when we think about you know how much money can you make in tech sales, you want to look at a data set like this because there's a lot of um, people that make videos and they talk about, oh, you can make so much money in tech sales, but a lot of times it's anecdotal evidence. It's just you know one person talking about how much they made in a given year and they might've had a really good year. You don't know how long they've been in tech sales. You don't know what their job title is. So in this video, I really want to do a good job of talking about you know, based on your tenure, based on your job title, based on your location, and also based on data from a recruiting firm that has done this for thousands of different um, tech salespeople. Um, so you, you can know it's really solid data that, um, you know, you have all the context on. Um, so, and the reason why uh, Bet's recruiting is a great source of data is because this is exactly what they can do. You can, you see, um, we're on their website right now. They talk about helping, you know, anybody from SDRs to CROs. These are SDRs, especially. This is like the most common entry level tech sales job title. It's clear they work with tech companies and it's clear they work with sales teams. So this um, recruiting firm has, you know, a ton of experience specifically in tech sales, which is kind of rare to find. In terms of how you can find the resource that we're going to look at today, you can see this banner um, on the top of their website. You can probably get to it. Yeah, you can get to it from clicking. But either way, you're going to get to this compensation guide for 2023. So let's walk through this. Um, we won't read the messages at the beginning. They talk about, you know, the tech sales job market being impacted by the downturn. We'll talk about that a little more later. This I do want to spend a second here. So they're talking about target compensation. This is going to be important to understand because this shows up in all the data they show later. Basically, what they mean by target compensation is the market rate. And um, Betts also works with companies that are hiring for tech sales. And so this is what Betts is recommending that those companies pay for each of these roles. Um, so that's just important to keep in mind as we look. All the the data for each role that we're going to look at is going to look like this. So it's just important to keep in mind what they mean when they say target. These key stats are also very interesting. Um, obviously, the massive move to remote is super important, like post COVID, um, especially in tech, it was easy for a lot of employees to go remote. And that was especially true for salespeople. So you're seeing this, you know, massive change in the tech sales world where you can do pretty much any job remotely. Um, which is super interesting. So if you're just getting into tech sales, know that remote is definitely an option. Um, right here, it talks about the decrease in SDR salaries for the first time in two years. We all know this has happened um, with all the layoffs and the downturn, the um, market has been flooded with more talent. So that's gonna, you know, supply demand, that's gonna drive down salaries. But it's interesting to see that salaries have only dropped 10% for SDRs, and this is after two years of increases. So tech sales salaries were going up by a lot for a while, um, and now they've dropped by 10%. So, you know, when you think about the tech, tech layoffs, yes, they're happening. Yes, is it harder to get a job now? Probably, 
but it's not impossible and salaries haven't dropped that much. So all in all, I would be encouraged if you're getting into tech sales right now. And then you see that AE compensation has only dropped by about 5%, so even less. And then these last two bubbles don't really concern. It's just about revenue operations and sales ops, which is tangential to tech sales, but probably not what you're going for in an entry level role. Um, you can here, I'm gonna move my video bubble. I'll move right here. Um, these are just more trends they report. I think these are super interesting. We just don't have a ton of time to go through them right now. I wanna keep this video as short as possible, but I highly recommend going back to this URL and um, looking at these trends um, later. Here, here's where you really want to focus. So if you're, you know, breaking into tech sales, we focus on people who are obviously breaking into tech sales, you know, getting into tech sales. So we're not going to talk about, you know, super senior roles. We want to talk about the first roles that you're going to get in tech sales. And the most common one of those is sales development representative or SDR. Right here, you can see what we already saw above, you know, AE and SDR compensation dropped by, you know, 5 to 10K in 2022 during the downturn remote work. This is all pretty much stuff that was covered earlier in this report. So let's get to the um, the stuff that everybody actually wants to see, which is the actual compensation data. So this is where we're going to spend, you know, the most of the time in, the, in this video talking about how much you can actually make in tech sales based on your role, your experience and your location. So SDR right here, hold on, I'm going to open up uh, a pen here so that I can Perfect. So um, SDR. So what this stands for is sales development representative. Another common um, title for entry level is business development representative, BDR. But just know that SDR stands for sales development representative for whenever you're searching for jobs. So this is recent grads. So this is somebody who has no experience in tech sales. You probably just graduated from college. This is going to be like the for in your first year in tech sales. This is the compensation you're looking at. And again, we, we reviewed the definition of target from above. This is basically what Betts is recommending to companies that are hiring for this role. And you can see that this corresponds to about 50, the 50th percentile of the candidate pool. So on average, your base salary you're looking at as a sales development representative in tech sales is 50K. And then OTE stands for on target earnings. And for on target earnings in your first year in tech sales, you're probably looking at about 70K. If you don't know what OTE means, it stands for, like I said, on target earnings. We have a blog post about this in our um, on our on our blog on breakingtexas.com. I'll also link that as well in the description. But for now, it's basically just your base salary plus your on target commissions. And then if you see, you know, this is what's target. And then if you are a really good candidate somehow and you, you are at the top of your base, you're looking at 65K base and 80K OTE. All in all, like from what I hear about, you know, roles that you can get out of college, this is, you know, pretty darn good for your base salary um, and your on-target earnings. Next, let's move on to an SDR who has, what this means is experience. So six months plus of experience. The reason I think this is super important, and I tell people this all the time, the uh, the jump in compensation and responsibility you can get goes up so rapidly in tech sales because you know they don't people don't or colleges and universities don't really teach sales. Uh, most people don't come out of college totally ready to hit the ground running as an SDR, and this is different from other jobs. Um, for example, if you're a computer programmer and you've been doing computer programming in school for four years, of course, you still have stuff to learn, but you can hit the ground running a little bit. As an SDR, you really have to get trained and, and you know, get up to speed. And that's why there's this big jump just six months after your career. And so what I often tell um, people who are breaking into tech sales, don't worry about your first role being your dream job. Um, do your best in the interview process, send out as many applications as you can, and then take the best offer you can get, go to that job, work hard for six months, and then after that, you're either going to love that job, get promoted, or they're going to give you a raise. And if they don't, and you want to move on, or you don't like that company, then you're going to be able to go somewhere else, and you're going to have sales development representative on your resume. You're going to have so much more experience than you did when you started. And that's why we, and companies know that. That's why we see this increase in compensation after you've been in, um, you've been in SDR for six months. And so, you know, in the beginning, 
your, your base salary is 50 K and then you're going to have a 20% jump to 60 K already six months after, um, you're in tech sales and, and your OTE is also going to jump by 10 K. Um, and this is for the 40th percentile of the candidate pool. So, and then again, you know, at the, at the top end, you're looking at 70 K base, hundred K OT. I wouldn't count on this, but that's just, you know, what's possible at the top end for, um, SDRs that have been in tech sales for six months. So let's move on now to account executive. Let me scroll down here a bit. Okay. So we might not spend as much time on this because your entry level role in tech sales is going to be as an SDR. Sometimes you can get into tech sales as an account executive, um, right off the bat. This is how I actually started my career, but the only way you're usually able to start in tech sales as an account executive is if the company is selling to SMB or small and medium businesses. So there are three account sizes in tech sales. There's SMB, mid-market and enterprise. SMB is the smallest. The deal sizes are a lot smaller. Um, and so that's why companies are more willing to trust, trust brand new salespeople. Um, as as AEs when they sell to SMBs because there are so many small to medium businesses out there. You're not going to like ruin the company's opportunities if you mess up a deal with one small to medium business. And so, but just know that these account executive roles, um, the pay here is is not going to be entry level. This is going to, and you can see um, the experience here. So zero to three years and three to five years. Um, I guess it does say zero to three. So it does assume that maybe you can get one of these jobs right out of college, but more often than not, the pay as you're starting in tech sales is going to be more like the, the SDR pay that we saw above. So, but after you're an SDR account executive is what you often get promoted to. So you can start to think about your career path in tech sales after you've been an SDR for, I don't know, a year or two, and you get promoted to be an account executive, you're looking at a base salary of 80 K and then your OT is going to jump a lot too, because um, your pay mix, this is the, the split between your base salary and your commission in your OTE is 50, 50 when you become an AE. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. 80 times two is 160. Your OTE is 50% base, um, 50% commission. And so, you know, if you're thinking about how much you, you, as an SDR in your first year, I think it was said you're making about 70 K OTE. And as soon as your first or second year, you can already be making 160 K OTE. That is just crazy career growth. And that's what, when people get really excited about tech sales, this is one of the things to keep in mind. You can just, it's based on performance. A lot of people burn out. You have to remember that. Like a lot of people don't make it. A lot of people are not successful in tech sales, but if you are successful, the, your ability to grow quickly and grow your salary and compensation quickly is definitely there. So now let's look at um, account executives that are a little more tenured. So this, these are going to be account executives that have been in tech sales for a minimum of three years. And then your base salary is going to go up to 100K and your OT can be as high as 200K. Um, so, you know, three years would be quick. That's on the lower end. But just the possibility that you can be making 200K or more if you're at the very top of the candidate pool. Um, you know, that just, again, goes to show you how quickly you can grow your earnings in, um, in tech sales. And we'll look at this last one just for context. If you're just breaking into tech sales, I think this is more about looking to the future and less about what you can make, um, as you're just getting started out, but an enterprise account executive. So earlier I was talking about the different account sizes in tech sales. You've got SMB, small, medium businesses, you've got mid market and you've got enterprise. Enterprise is the top. If you're selling software, especially, or, or selling big deals to enterprises and tech sales, that's like, you know, you've made it in tech sales. That's when you are really going to start um, making some serious money. And, but like you see here, this is five to 10 years of experience. You know, you, a person who makes it here has probably started as an SDR, um, then got promoted to AE, been successful as an AE for like several years, and then finally got the call up to be an enterprise AE. And this is where you can start making, um, you know, serious money in tech sales. You have a base salary of about 140 K on target. Um, OTE again, this is base plus commission of 280 K. And then on the high end, you can be making 200 K salary, 400 K OTE. Um, and, and it really goes up from here. It's not listed here, but 
when you hear about people in tech sales making, you know, 750,000 a year, over a million a year, these are often enterprise AEs who are at the top tech companies selling million, multi-million dollar deals and cashing their commission checks on those deals. So this is like, you know, if you really want to grow your career in tech sales over like a decade, this is, you know, this is kind of the potential you're looking at over time. Let's scroll down here and see, oh yeah, this is broken down by location. Um, so one thing to note for tech sales, and I, this probably goes for like a lot of jobs, but New York and San Francisco is where you're going to make the most money. So if you're graduating from school or transitioning from a career and you're living somewhere else that's not in New York or San Francisco, um, you might consider, you know, those two cities if you are thinking about moving. Again, a lot of um, tech sales roles are remote now. We talked about that earlier. Let's actually, I haven't looked at this. Let's see. So it looks like, you know, if you're in New York or San Francisco, this is the target base OT you're looking at. And then it looks like if you're remote, it's a little bit less. Same thing for, you know, the other roles. Remote looks like it's a little bit less. And I guess what they're doing is they're just accounting for, you know, if you actually live in New York or San Francisco, they're kind of companies that account for that cost of living and pay you a little bit more. But the fact that you could live like somewhere super cheap, like in the middle of the country and only make like not very much less than you would if you actually lived in New York or San Francisco, you know, maybe you don't really need to move to New York or San Francisco. Um, and it does look like for most of these, the the pay throughout, you know, the other time zones is so 60, 80. Yeah. So a lot of them are like pretty similar across the board. It's just slightly higher in New York and San Francisco. That's the general trend. If you want to go look more in detail for your specific job title and your specific time zone, we will um, drop this link in the description of the video after this. I think that's pretty much it. The rest of the roles in this um, in this report, you should definitely look at them. Um, like you can see leadership, like SDR and sales manager as well. Um, this is another option. If you, um, going to be an enterprise AE is what's called the individual contributor path. You're basically staying as a salesperson. But if you're a really good SDR or a really good AE, you'll also have the opportunity to become a leader or become a manager of SDRs or a manager of um, AEs, which is what sales managers normally do. And you can see um, just real quickly the um, the type of target pay you're looking at as an SDR manager and a sales manager. Um, once you get to be a sales manager with three to five years experience, you're getting close to what you would make uh, as like a more tenured AE or an enterprise, enterprise AE. So you could really make a lot, whether you stay as an individual contributor or you go into management. It's all about what you want in my career i actually start i was a successful account executive i became a sales manager and then i realized that i really didn't like management as much and so that's when i switched back to being an enterprise ae um, and so you know you it's really up to you you want to decide do you want to manage people or do you work better on your own uh, move faster on your own um, stuff like that um, we should make a whole other video about that now that i think about it but um yeah, I think that's it. I don't want to make this video go too much longer. Let me just scroll through the rest of this guide. Um, customer success, marketing. If you're interested in those roles, you can definitely look through the guide. You know, we're just focusing on SDRs and AEs because those are the main entry level tech sales roles. Um, and yeah, like I said before, we have a ton of um, content on our blog about, um, you know, where um, or how much money you can make in tech sales. And this is the this is the blog post about OTE actually, which I mentioned earlier. So um, don't want to go too much longer. Um, hope that was helpful. Um, please comment um, in the comment section below. Um, subscribe. And thanks so much for your time.